Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Balao. This is the Tier 10 American Submarine. We are on the TST server. This is definitely a work in progress. However, I wanted to showcase this entire match because it is a successful match in a submarine. There are bots, but admittedly, there's a lot of player-controlled units as well. So there's going to be a good mix of different situations that come up in this game. And I'm going to try and communicate how I am approaching the problem and whether that feels right in the moment or whether I would have maybe scrapped it and done something different. Uh, currently, there's only two submarines that we can test right now. We can test an American and a German. The American has sequential reload, but it does have four torpedoes in the rear. The German has more traditional, all torpedoes get reloaded at the same time, but there are no torpedoes facing the rear. Now, I have tried to develop a strategy. Oh yeah, here is a great example of something I would not do again. Now notice something. I went underwater hoping to avoid detection. Well, guess what? The only way I can avoid detection is if I go to maximum depth, but if I'm underwater, and detected, it's using double of my resource. So in that situation right there, the best thing for me to do would probably just stay on the surface because he's gonna detect me underwater as easily as he does on the top of the surface when I'm on. So it didn't do anything other than quickly use up that resource. So I would not ever do that again. I would never feel compelled to dive underwater if it was a similar situation at the beginning of a game where it's clear that the aircraft carrier is looking for a DD to spot and or damage with his. He's not looking to go after us. If he does, he'll have to drop something on top of us. Teammates can help. If we need to, we can dive at that point to avoid the damage. But using up the resource because we were detected, there was no possibility that we would ever not be detected. So there was no reason to use the resource. You know, so that's something that I noticed right away in this match that was like, oh yeah, that's that's just a dumb call. That's that's what you get used to over time. You know, mechanically understanding the situation, what has the least amount of punishment, and I think the least amount of punishment is just the three to ten seconds on the surface near your spawn. You don't want to use up that resource because you need it at late game. I mean, there I can't tell you how many times. I've been very low on that resource and desperately wanting it. So it, it is important. Now, I really like staying on the surface. And I really like dumb firing predominantly my torpedoes. Uh, the nice thing about the submarine is you don't need your initial homing in order to benefit from it. So I have found, especially recently, if I dumb fire and send a pretty accurate send, you know, making sure to bring in any momentum that the ship may or may not have, and then on top of that layering with the ping mechanic, I've been able to do some pretty good damage. Uh, and I haven't been someone who's trying to exclusively do double ping damage. I'm just trying to get as much torpedo damage out as quickly as possible. Now, the momentum of the ships there was going to be a giant island. If you try and ping a target, it's going to pull the torpedoes quickly into an island. So you don't want to send torpedoes and then ping a target as they're moving into island cover. That will provide them with the perfect opportunity for the torpedoes to just fully absorb into the island. Uh, you want to send torpedoes or wait to send torpedoes when they are moving away from islands and they can't use them as cover. Now we were under hydroacoustic, which is the GK. It's going to be effective at all ranges except for a max dive, a uh, crash dive, I guess. And I don't want to have to do that because I have to give up a resource. So while I am actually going down to the depth, I'm getting double my resource used up. So it's much better, in my opinion, as a submarine, to use the full speed to move away before committing to having to go underwater or anything like that. So... As I came around this corner, I sent torpedoes, and lo and behold, we run into an enemy submarine on the surface. Uh, so I'm going to ping him, and I sent my torpedoes, and yes, this is the order that you want to send your torpedoes. I know that doesn't make sense to some people, but yes, you want to send your torpedoes first, and then ping second. 
Now, first ping, I think he used damage control. Second ping, we actually got him. And we're gonna land a couple torpedoes on him. Two torpedoes, to be in, uh, precise. Seven incapacitations, that was useful. And on top of that, we have the opportunity to ping again. Now, this is what the submarine can do that destroyers cannot. They can layer and use some of their torpedo hits on maybe a target in front, like a DD or a submarine. And then you can send some more pings in the back and actually hit the person behind them. And that is kind of really optimized damage. You can't really do that with other classes. You can't have one target take a couple and another target take the rest. That doesn't happen frequently, but here it was very easy to do, and it all came down to sending the torpedoes first, homing, homing, and, you know, going from there. I love disengaging with the American sub because you can send torps in the rear. I think the best approach, if you're interested in mimicking this, sending torpedoes frequently on cooldown, uh, but you want to, on the Americans, do a little bit of forward, rear, forward, rear. So, if you can get into that rhythm, you will have your sequential reload. It'll happen fairly quickly, so you'll have enough torpedoes that are beneficial. And obviously, I can ping facing rear, facing side. I can ping at any angle. It's 360 degrees around the ship. There's no reason to hold off on pinging. The only reason you would hold off on pinging is if you didn't want to give away your position. And now that's a whole nother reason. And as you can see, I initially decided to go towards the Conqueror, but we saw the Petro, so I switched my lock and see you later, Petro. You know, it's a really interesting mechanic design that the sonar ping has. I know this isn't real. I know that this isn't real, but for the gameplay itself, I like the variety that it creates because obviously DDs can't do that. Now, enemy air is dropping his, I believe he's dropping, yeah, well, he's dropping. That was the Dutch cruiser. He dropped his squadron on top of us. I tried to avoid the depth charges that I expected. And here is more. This is another thing. Any aircraft that is not a dedicated aircraft cannot spot you on the surface. So there's no reason to be afraid. They cannot see you. They do not provide spotting information. Those are the battleship depth charge aircraft. You want to avoid it, and the best way to do that is to be at max speed, just like I did right there. He couldn't get his depth charges on us, and are we going to get a double ping right off the bat? Double ping is actually pretty hard to get. And we've got some torps in the water, good. Back torpedoes fully sent, front torpedoes are ready to go. And I really like the way the American rhythm has of this. Love the highlight that they added. It's a great little tool to see your friendlies or your foe underwater. I will re reiterate, I don't like that the opponent can see my resources. That's a challenge. That's a really big challenge. Uh, but I think that, you know, for all the things that they did wrong, they did other things that I didn't expect them to do right. So I'm kind of 50-50 on how I, I feel about this patch. I'm enjoying this play. I like the visual. It does feel very submarine as I'm staring through what I think is a periscope and I, I like the homing aspect but I also like not having to home and I feel like the forward launching torpedo is it's a, it's a nice different feel compared to destroyers so we're on the surface we're contesting clearly there's an enemy submarine somewhere and I'm looking for that double ping I'm desperately looking for it we're not gonna get it and it doesn't really matter because it's broadside so you can see it's more about getting the torpedoes out frequently than getting the perfect lock. Waiting on a perfect lock or a perfect situation, the game's going to pass you by. You don't want that. That's, that's the best way to have low impact as a submarine. The best way to have high impact, though, is anytime there's a target that's inside of your torpedo range and will remain for a significant amount of time, you send them dumb fire. I try and wait until I have at least four, but you send them dumb fire, and then you work on getting a, a ping lock. And that actually works well with the commander skill talent. 
it basically requires that you send your torpedoes dumb fired first and then getting a double ping will increase the damage by 15%. So it's kind of teaching you the optimal way to do the most damage. That's how I, I interpret it. So we bump into the enemy submarine. You can clearly see his resource is gone. Once again, I don't like that. I wish it was hidden from the opponent, but obviously shared to your friendly. Uh, I sent torpedoes because we got a lock on him and I'm hoping to force him down. I'm not really afraid of the torpedoes from uh, submarines. They suck at anti-submarine warfare. It, it really requires very, very precise hits it's not something that you can just spend and feather into a perfect lock. It's much better to just rush through it, I found. And he's clearly trying to, to lock on us. I'm trying to avoid this. I don't want him to ram me. Uh, we're being attacked, I believe. And in the huge advantage here, boom, ping lock him, sail right past him, dumb fire, so it's in the position that it needs to be. Couldn't be easier, man. Set him up, see you later. It's, it felt so slick, just like, as we drove by, I'm going to attach that to you and just keep going. The American sub can easily do that. The German, not so much. But this technique, it works really well with the Germans for obviously the reason of the reload mechanic. It's completely different. So anything forward of its position, it's sending frequent torpedoes forward. But it can't disengage and look slick like that compared to the Americans. So, you know, I, I love the American submarine. Honestly, I feel like it's better than the Germans because it's more balanced. But the Germans can do a ton of forward position torpedoes. It's just whether it's whether they are allowed to do that the whole time. That's where they end up being worse than the Americans. And honestly, the resource, the consumable resource, the battery that the Americans have, it's amazing. Anytime you feel like feel an urge to dip below the surface for 20 or 30 seconds, because it will take roughly that time, you can activate it and you can get it for free. Oh, and by the way, one cool thing that I noticed is, remember, if you're underwater and you're detecting, you are using your resource at double the rate that you would normally. However, if you use the battery consumable from the Americans, that makes that effect immune. So you could conceivably wait to use the consumable to an absolute dire situation where you're going to be detected and also forced to be underwater and it will suspend the resource being used up for the duration of the consumable. So that's a good key moment to take double uh, advantage of it. So I, I noticed that, I like that. Things I would recommend changing, I would really want to see commander skills evolve a little bit more. Really, really do. I don't feel like the consumables are fully balanced. I still feel like the Americans is universally better than the Germans in every situation. Um, I like the ping mechanic. I like all that. I, I figured out how to do real damage, and it's just frequent torpedoing. And also, look, we have our underwater resource, huge amount. So I felt like, yeah, top on the team, and we still could be underwater for the rest of the game. That's the way to play in-game for subs, and uh, they felt great. Hopefully this video was interesting to you guys. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. If you dislike, dislike. You can subscribe to my channel. We do World of Warship videos. My North American Recruit Invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash notzer, and I'm looking forward to you guys joining me on either platform. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day.